How's it going everyone? It's Sam. We have a bank that is now denying people the ability to buy cryptocurrencies. They're actually stopping them from sending it to some specific exchanges. We also have news that uh, zone, the Eurozone, is actually in recession here today. And some other news and drama on Binance and Gary Gensler. There's a lot to cover. If you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn that bell notification. I also want to thank New Holland Brewing Company, which is actually a hometown brewing company that is now sponsored the channel, but we'll talk more about that later. I literally drink their stuff all the time, so I'm really pumped up to be able to work with them. So please give them some love down below. We have links. Now, as you can see, the crypto market is pretty much unchanged. Bitcoin's up a little bit. Crypto's up a little bit in the last 24 hours, but we're right in this $26,000, $27,000 range that we've been at for a long time. And honestly, some of the news about Binance hasn't caused too much fear, I guess, in the overall market, which is good. Now, stocks, on the other hand, are doing really well. We have another day where the Nasdaq's up 0.7%. Tesla's leading the way again. This is the 10th day in a row, I believe it is, that Tesla's up. But yesterday, there was a little bit of fear in the overall stock market. And this is correlated to crypto, so I just want to cover this. Bank of Canada lifts rates to a 22-year high, ending a four-month pause. So they ended up raising 25 basis points. This really caught the market off guard. There was about an 80% chance, 80% of analysts thought that they were not going to raise rates, and they ended up doing that. Now, keep in mind, they have higher GDP than us, higher GDP growth. They beat GDP by more than the U.S. as well. And... They've also had a pause for a while. So I think the market kind of got worried yesterday that maybe the Fed wasn't going to pause rates because of this, because Canada and the U.S. kind of usually work in similar fashion and raise and a pause at the same time, typically. But we have to remember that these countries are different. We're seeing different growth. We're seeing different amount of economic activity. And the Fed has continued to raise rates. And we're at a higher rate than Bank of Canada is. So this isn't too surprising. There's still about a 71% chance that we're going to see no rate hike now uh, next week. So we don't have too much longer. We have about one week before the next, uh, a little bit less than a week before the next Fed rate decision, CPI and PPI coming in next week as well. Now, there is some news from Binance. This could affect the market no matter what happens with CPI and PPI. If there's more negative news that comes out about Binance or Coinbase. This could force the market down, the crypto market that is. According to a new filing from Binance's lawyers, SEC Chair Gary Gensler offered to be an advisor to the crypto exchange in 2019. At the time, Gary Gensler was teaching at MIT. Gary Gensler has been cracking down on crypto over the past year, and earlier this week he sued Binance and Coinbase. So apparently he actually met with CZ, he eventually met him in Japan for lunch uh, after several March 2019 conversations with him and Binance executives. Pretty interesting. He ends up not working for them. Binance says that they did not give him the job. And then he goes, becomes the SEC chair and then cracks down on crypto. Maybe a little bit of uh, a little bit of hatred there. I'm not exactly sure, but kind of interesting that he said 75% of cryptos were not securities. When he was teaching MIT, he tries to become an advisor, get shot down, then has some vendetta against cryptocurrency. And this is coming from a guy that said that he's never even owned cryptocurrency. Pretty interesting there. Now, that is kind of just uh, a saga that we're going to have to continue to watch. I, I should say, too, the crypto markets held up extremely well due to this, this news over the last week. We've had a lot of fear in the market but people are still holding on to their crypto. I think a lot of the paper hands have gone out of the market. A lot of people are just buying and holding long-term, not too worried about it. Of course, that could always change. So I'm not saying that we are at the very bottom or that we've hit the bottom for sure, but it is a good sign, I think, that we're seeing bad news and the market's not really moving down that much. And part of that might be because the overall market's moving up like crazy and there is a Fed U-turn happening. So that's a lot of good news macro-wise, and then this is bad news crypto-wise, so it kind of evens out, but we'll have to see what happens over the next week. Now, I do want to talk about the bank that is shutting down crypto payments. Uh, I also want to talk about the recession happening in the Eurozone, but first, I want to thank New Holland. Okay, so I've been doing YouTube for a long time, 
And I just want to say, this is one of the coolest things I've ever done. I've actually partnered with someone that is in my hometown. It's New Holland Brewing Company. And they sent me over a few bottles of whiskey and gin. And I'm not joking. We actually go here. Uh, We just moved. But when we were at our old house, we were just a few blocks from New Holland. And we would go there once every week or every couple weeks. And we drink their beer all the time. So if you are ever in the store and you see Dragon's Milk or Dragon's Milk White or any of their other variations, they also have something called Triple Mash, which is a 17% ABV beer. It's fantastic. If you like the dark stuff, grab it. If you like the alcohol, grab that. If you like Hazy River, that's one of my favorite IPAs. I literally had it last night. We went to New Holland to eat. If you ever see that in the stores, grab some. It's great beer. It's great alcohol. I poured myself a little bit right here. I have to be careful because it is the middle of the day here, but you know, I'm doing the promotion for them, so I have to try it out, right? Uh, I, I have not tried this one before, the Origin, but it is fantastic. I usually just go with the beer barrel bourbon. How great does that sound? And this is absolutely crazy timing within an hour of me recording this integration. Uh, one of my family members reached out and said in our family group chat that New Holland just won the world's best bourbon according to the 2023 Addy International Spirits Competition. And this is on Forbes right now. This is the bottle that I was just talking about. Literally, I have it right in the background there. Uh, And it's $45 starting off. So if you want that, you can go check out their website. I'll leave a link to the website underneath the video. And Also, if you're just in the stores, they're in a lot of grocery stores, especially in the Midwest, but also throughout the whole U.S., so definitely get yourself some of this beer or alcohol. Of course, make sure you're 21, drink responsibly, and all that, but definitely check it out. Special thanks to New Holland Brewing for sponsoring. So we just got news. Australia's largest bank is blocking payments to some crypto exchanges. According to this, today, Commonwealth Bank in Australia said on Thursday, they would block some payments to certain cryptocurrency exchanges as part of a suite of anti-scam measures that would limit customer crypto payments. A spokesperson for the company, the country's largest bank, declined to name the crypto exchanges involved. The bank said they would also, from Thursday, hold certain payments to crypto exchanges for 24 hours and soon introduce a monthly $10,000 Australian dollars, $6,666 transfer limit to crypto exchanges. The CBA spokesperson declined to say whether those measures would apply to all crypto exchanges or a select few. Customers who make payments to cryptocurrency exchanges are currently facing a significant higher risk of potentially being scammed. This is not given what exchanges they're they're actually uh, imposing these limits on, but it does cut down on people's ability to do what they want with their money. Right? They're not limiting people's uh, transfers to to casinos or anything like that or uh, stopping them from buying certain things that are out of the question that could be scammy this is kind of interesting too because it does not say like new payments to crypto exchanges that have not been sent so you could have been you could have been transacting a hundred thousand dollars a day back and forth and then all of a sudden after using it for years and having no problems they say nope you're cut off sixty six hundred dollars I don't like to see this, but it is expected. That's why I think it's a good idea to have already put money in crypto. And for most people, this won't matter. If you were buying $6,666 worth of crypto a day, that's that's a lot, right? Uh, but for some people, that's not. If you want to put a million dollars into the market, let's say you're worth $50 million and you want to put a million dollars into the market today, you couldn't do that. It would take you, what, 30 days? Something uh, 150 days, something like that. 150 days is closer. It would take you a long time to be able to put all that money into the market. And, you know, the banks aren't always open either. So this is just kind of sad for people in Australia, but I wouldn't be surprised if this happens other places as well. Hopefully we get some more clarification as to what exchanges that is that they're putting limits on because some exchanges are pretty uh, well thought of, right? It would be like here in the U.S. if, uh, JP Morgan started limiting your exposure or your ability to transfer to Coinbase to you know six thousand dollars. That'd be surprising because Coinbase is a great company. It's really well regulated.
Of course, that is kind of an interesting thing to say after all the allegations this week. But still, good news uh, to know. We also got news that the Eurozone is officially entering into recession. They just got GDP numbers and their GDP dropped by 0.1% in the first three months of 2023 compared to the previous quarter. Um, On the other hand, in Q4 2022, GDP had decreased by 0.1% also. So this is two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. Hence, they are in recession. Now, some people might say, well, is now the time to sell then? Because we could be having recession here in the US. They already have it in the Eurozone. It seems like the economy is much stronger here in the US. That being said, we could always hit recession. I think we already hit technical recession last year, but they didn't call it recession because the job market was so good. But honestly, that, that's all past looking. The market prices things in ahead of time. The market is obviously pricing in that everything's getting bad, better on the macro, right? We're seeing indices continue to move up. Big tech continue to move up. Tesla up 3.7% here today. NASDAQ up 0.8%. So I would not be too worried on that front, but you have to make your own decision. It typically isn't the best time to be selling stocks when we're going when we officially have already been in a recession. Typically, we've already been through the worst of it in the stock market by that point. Now, let me know your thoughts about this underneath the video. Again, special thanks to New Holland for sponsoring this video. I love their products. If you want to check them out, check the links underneath the video. Also, buy them in the grocery stores. Of course, drink responsibly. I'm not telling you what to do. You have to do your own due diligence, even on your beer and whiskey brands.